Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Always seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have a major problem because we are taught that there are certain people Allah doesn't forgive. I need to know who they are because I don't want to be from among them. So if you look at certain ahadith, certain occasions, for example, the hadith of An-Nisf min Sha'ban, the hadith of uh, the half of Ramadan, uh, the half of Sha'ban, where it is reported that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all those besides certain people. Who are those certain people? That hadith is in Sunan ibn Majah. And although the scholars have spoken about its authenticity or whether it's authentic or not, the point being driven home is actually a point that is agreed upon by all to say, if you want to achieve the forgiveness of Allah, save yourselves from the following. Number one, Al-Mushrik. Straight. The first word is Al-Mushrik. That hadith says, a person who associates partners with Allah in worship, Allah says, I won't forgive that person. But now, I said earlier, no matter what you've done, if you seek forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. Look at the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were all mushriks at one stage. They were all people who associated partners with Allah in the Meccan period. Those from Mecca. That's what they were. They were mushrikeen of Mecca. Because they sought forgiveness and changed their ways, Allah forgave them. But we're talking of a person who passes away and he did not seek forgiveness or she did not seek forgiveness. Allah says, I can forgive everything, but shirk, I won't forgive. Allah has chosen and declared and dictated that he will not forgive association of partnership in worship with him. But besides that, he may forgive whatever he wills. So that's something interesting. I need to constantly ask myself, is this that I'm doing shirk? And don't be afraid of that question. And if there is something doubtful, the better thing to do is to leave it, quit it. This is doubtful. I may earn the anger of Allah. If that is the case, I don't want to even risk earning the anger of Allah. I'll just leave it out. But Let's move on. Besides shirk, there are certain things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he forgives all people, certain categories he won't. The second one is al-mushahin. A person who holds in his heart grudge and hate and ill feeling and malice towards others. Clean your heart. My brothers and sisters, if you're a mu'min and you want paradise, clean your heart. Even those who you disagree with or those who disagree with you, just have a clean feeling towards them. Even people who hate you and who don't like you, in your heart, you don't need to have that enmity and hatred and malice and dirt, but rather you can stay away comfortably, but with respect, with dignity, with kindness, with good words. You see when there are two people and they don't like each other. You find one swearing the other, one backbiting about the other, and he is showing his enmity and hatred and the other is just saying, Alhamdulillah, how are you my brother? Salaamu Alaikum, everything okay? And that's it. He doesn't say much more, but in his heart, he doesn't hold the grudge. He says, never mind, that's my brother. He doesn't like me. We have a misunderstanding. Perhaps Allah will one day sort out his heart. As for my heart, it's clean. That is a mu'min. You deserve Jannah. You know why? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ once, he pointed at a companion who was walking away and he told his companions, if you want to see a person from paradise, that's the man. So they followed him trying to find out what exactly is he doing and so on. And they found, subhanallah, that this person was not doing more ibadah or extra things. But what he did say is there is only one thing I know that I do every night before I recline. I clean my heart of hatred, enmity, malice, jealousy, etc, etc against anyone else. And the Prophet ﷺ confirmed that that was a quality of Jannah. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, if you are able when you are reclining at night, to clean your heart, there is no ill feeling against others, then do it. Allah will grant you the reward of it and the reward of it is Jannah. Subhanallah. So look at how Allah says he doesn't forgive shirk on one hand because that's the association of partnership in worship with him. And on the other hand, he doesn't forgive those who have ill feeling against his creation because Allah created and Allah put people in your, in your life in order to test you. We've said that many times. Allah makes you cross the path of a person to test you. Will you be just and fair or are you going to just vent and be a person who thinks that he is superior to everybody else? If that's the case, you won't achieve forgiveness that easily because another quality that is mentioned is a person who lengthens his clothing 
well below his ankles. It is depictive of pride. So the quality that Allah does not like is the quality of pride. When you are a person who is full of pride and you're proud, where you belittle others, in that particular case, it's going to be tough for you to be forgiven by Allah. Allah says, I don't like the one who is proud and arrogant. The Quran says that Allah doesn't like those who are, you know, haughty and they belittle others. They are proud. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when the Prophet once said, he will not enter paradise in whose heart is even a mustard seeds weight worth of pride. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they questioned, they said, O Messenger, we love our clothing. We love our conveyance, meaning like we have vehicles today, right? We love our conveyance. We love our clothing and so on. The homes and so on. What about that? So the Prophet ﷺ says, that is not a sign of pride. To have the best of clothing, to have the best of this and the best of that is not the sign of pride. The sign of pride is when a person rejects the truth and belittles others. You treat them like rubbish. Astaghfirullah. You treat someone like you are it and that person is nothing, dust. You ignore them. You treat them like they are not even human beings. Treat people with respect. Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive you for your shortcomings without even you knowing. I had a shortcoming and it was forgiven by Allah automatically. Because the Quran says when you do good deeds, they will automatically wipe out your minor sins. Automatic. So keep on doing more and more good deeds. Remember on the day of judgment, Allah puts a scale to weigh your good and bad. It doesn't mean if you don't have any bad, that's the only time you're going to Jannah. No, you're a human. You will have some bad. But Allah says when your good outweighs the bad, you go to Jannah. May Allah forgive us. Another one, al qatir a person who cuts relationships with their family for no reason or for dunya purposes, because of money, because of wealth, because of some little misunderstanding, you cut relations with those we made you related to. When you're related to someone, who chose that relationship? You didn't. Allah chose it. Allah says, I'm going to test you. That's why I made this person who is a tyrant your father. Allah forgive us. May Allah not make us fathers who are tyrants. But even if your father is a tyrant, remember something. Don't break relations unnecessarily. You don't break a relation unnecessarily. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. People ask, what about obedience to parents? Obedience to parents within that which is reasonable is a duty of Allah has placed on our shoulders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has always told us to be kind to your parents. Even if you disagree, the other day, someone was telling me that, but isn't Allah said, I'm not allowed to disagree with my father. He actually gave me money and he's sending me to buy something that was actually haram. Let's not say what it's a bit embarrassing. So what should I do? Isn't we're not allowed to disobey? I said, listen, you don't ever be unkind to your folks, to your parents, but you can disagree and you must disagree when they are wrong. When they're totally wrong, look at all the prophets of Allah with their family members. A good example of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He said, oh, my father, I disagree totally with what you're doing. But he said it respectfully. If the father got angry after that, it's not my problem. He said it respectfully. Listen, you are wrong. I don't agree with you. The way you are heading, you are heading into hellfire. He told his father clearly, oh, my father, I fear that the punishment of the most merciful will come to you and you become a friend of the devil. He told his own father that. Imagine any one of us telling our fathers, you're going to become a friend of the devil and Allah will punish you. Woo! I think there would be disaster in our homes. But anyway, you choose a respectful means and a respectful way of disagreeing because you are never allowed to be unkind to your parents, even when you disagree with them. And even if they are unkind, be kind, disagree politely. Worst comes to worst, walk away with respect, but don't be unkind. So that has got to do with Al-Aq. Al-Aq is different from Al-Qati'. Al-Qati' is a person who breaks relations generally with their family members. And Al-Aq is a person who is unkind to his or her own parents. You are unkind and disrespectful. Now, if for example, they are asking you to do something haram and you say, I'm not going to do it. Then your father says, you're not allowed to be disrespectful. You're being so disrespectful. You can smile and say, my beloved father, this is not disrespect. This is disagreement with respect. You're my father. I will not deny that, but I disagree with you respectfully. Very interesting. But if you disrespect your folks and your parents, it's going to be very hard for Allah to forgive you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness.
So another quality that is mentioned there is a mudmin, a person who is addicted to intoxicants of any nature. And they don't even have a plan to actually quit it or to seek the forgiveness of Allah. And you're coming in, for example, on an auspicious occasion. People are all being forgiven, but you're not being forgiven. Why? There's a problem. There's a barrier. Subhanallah. What is that barrier? You don't have an intention to quit the bad that you are addicted to in terms of that which is intoxicating or sinful. You don't have an intention. That's why my beloved brothers and sisters, remember one thing. When you are doing something wrong habitually, as a mu'min, at least feel in your heart what I'm doing is wrong. Wallahi, that feeling will save you. Do you see what I'm saying? Because the first time you committed the sin, you feel guilty. The second time, the guilt is less. The third time, the guilt is even less. The fourth and fifth and sixth time, guess what happens? You don't even feel it's a sin anymore. It just becomes nature. So Allah says, when you feel bad with your sin, it's a sign that you're a believer. Why would I feel bad? Because I love Allah. I have a weakness, but I love Allah. I want him to forgive me, strengthen me, and don't just make dua. A brother had a very bad habit of going to the clubs every weekend. So we met him and we started talking and I said, brother, just quit this habit. He says, make dua. I tell him, are you insulting yourself or me? Who are you insulting Allah? Dua is very important, I agree. But you can't just say, make dua, make dua, and two years have passed and you're still telling people, make dua, and you still keep on going. They making dua and you keep going to the clubs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Make an effort, learn to improve. If you haven't been for a whole month, thank Allah, don't go. And if you end up dropping and going after a month, make sure the next time it's not just a month, it's way beyond a month that you don't go. And I'm not saying keep going at longer intervals, but I'm saying you need to see an improvement. And then you say, make dua, I'm trying, I haven't been for so long. Like my buddies, astaghfirullah, who smoke. Smoking is a bad habit. You're still my buddy, but it's a bad habit. Quit it. Quit it. So if you were smoking 20 and you suddenly dropped to 10 and then you smoke every alternate day and then you smoke one a week, I'll tell you, my brother, you are there. Just cut the one a week and the uncle will tell you, no, if I don't have this one here, I will get so cross. I'm going to beat up my wife. What an excuse. What an excuse. You, you're down to one. The one uncle says, I need a cigar. Otherwise, these people are in trouble. I said, uncle, you know what? With that cigar, you are in trouble. Simple as that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. And I see some people are just looking at me like, you know, you don't even know what is going on here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So the reason I chose to speak about this is to, in order to help us develop ourselves. To say auspicious occasions, Allah forgives. Laylatul Qadr, Allah forgives. Ramadan, Allah forgives. So many of these days, Allah forgives. But certain categories, He doesn't forgive. And here we're talking of people whom Allah just forgives like that. Your name gets written. This person tried hard. Forgive. Jannah. Subhanallah. You need it once in your life. If Allah has accepted you, how do you know? That's the last question. You know how you know? Your life changes. That's how you know. Your life changes. When you go for Hajj, it's easy to fulfill the Hajj. But how do I know my Hajj was accepted? I will know it when if I come back and things have changed in my life positively. When you fast in Ramadan, your life changes, you're forgiven and all the sins are wiped out. How do I know that Ramadan was accepted when Ramadan exits and you know your life has changed? Something good has happened here. There's a good vibe. I'm now going to the mosque all the time. Something that's a sign Allah's forgiven you. It's a very good sign. When you seek forgiveness of Allah, how do you know Allah's forgiven you? When you quit a few of these things and your life changes somehow. Warm. Sometimes it happens because of the death of someone close to you. Your life changed. That death was a mercy for you. Subhanallah. Your life changed because you start thinking, gosh, my wife is gone. Guess what? I'm next. When you start thinking that your life changes, look forward to the day that you're going to meet with Allah. And Allah Almighty will bless you in a billion ways. Look forward. It's going to be the best day. The best day because we're trying. We're packing away our salah, we're packing away good deeds, we're cleansing our hearts, we're removing hatred, malice, jealousy, envy, etc. against others from our hearts. You got a clean heart and you're trying to worship Allah and you're constantly seeking forgiveness. You don't need much more than that. You're a human, you're a mu'min, you believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're trying very hard. Allah says, you did it, you have succeeded. That's what success is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. We are human, we commit sin, we falter, 
Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep trying. Never give up. No matter what. Come back. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.